I'm Erwin Lowe, I'm the Group Chief Medical Officer for St. Vincent's Health Australia. So that's a national chief medical officer role across our public hospitals, private hospitals and aged care facilities. We've got um, facilities across um, the country, six public hospitals, 10 private hospitals and 24 aged care facilities now. And I oversee the clinical governance of the group for the group, which is quality and safety. I look after improvement and innovation. I look after research uh, across the group, uh, patient experience, and, uh, and then on top of that, professional governance of the clinicians. My, the title of my keynote is about making the personal public. So and what that means is it's around the benefit of data in managing a pandemic, which is basically what the world is in the middle of still at the moment. And we know that health information is very personal, it is one of the highly private pieces of data that is protected strongly by law. But in order for us to be able to manage public health and help the population in responding to and infectious diseases like COVID, we do need to somehow make that personal information public so that we have the right information available to the right people. The health practitioners are well aware of the need for data governance and how data can be converted into information, into uh, you know, wisdom and be used in a practical way. So I'll, I'll in my presentation, I'll try to give a national perspective about what, uh, what, what data is available nationally, how that's used. I'll then go down to how organizations need to use it and then look at it and then, down, and then we'll move down to the facility and then to the team level. And obviously data can be used uh, to look at what's happened in the past. So historical data that can help us to take care inform us so that we know what's happened, it, it can give us real-time information as to what's going on now. But the power of data obviously is to help us to predict and model as to where things are going. And again, this is highly relevant uh, to respond to a pandemic. I mean, ultimately without data, you're gonna fly blind. So it's, it's, uh, it's uh, being able to tell us where we've been, where we are now and where we are headed. And, you know, uh, Again, it is, it's, it's stating the obvious, uh, you need data for practically everything that we have to do. But when it comes to a worldwide global pandemic, I mean, it becomes very, very key. So what I'll try to touch on as well in my presentation is how Australia does it, but then compare us with some of the other countries like the UK, which actually, I think is a world leader in um, um, providing public, the public with data around COVID. Um, you know, they've, they've got different agencies that are working very, very well together to uh, inform not just the UK, but the rest of the world as to how they are responding to the pandemic. It's been very helpful, actually. What the data will help with is in the area of um, uh, personal protective equipment management and then the supply chain around that, so PPE. Um, it, as we know, it's become quite crucial in the, during the different pandemic ways, the need to ensure supply of personal protective equipment like masks and the different types of masks from surgical masks to the respirators N95 or P2 respirators. And now uh, in this current wave, what's become very emergent is the uh, restrictions around the availability of rapid antigen tests or rat tests. And so organizations like ours have been using data. We've been, we have been using modeling to predict the demand versus the supply and to then titrate the amount that we need uh, on the floor in our stockpiles and uh, to, to ensure that our conditions are protected. Um, the, the other thing moving to the future that I'll touch on in, around data is the use of um, uh, genomic data around uh, tracking the different variants and then applying uh, artificial intelligence over that. So the machine learning 
um, deep learning neural networks that are being used now to not just model what's going to happen with the pandemic in different populations, but then also to be able to predict how uh, COVID will evolve into different variants and what will happen to, to it um, into the future. In 2022, besides trying to deal with the pandemic, which is going to have um, medium to longer term repercussions for everybody, including us, uh, you know, in, uh, to catch up with elective surgery, the chronic disease, the deferred diagnostics, the uh, conditions that haven't been picked up, like cancers that have been missed because we haven't been able to look after patients. That all is going to have to play out this year. But just so the audience is aware, St. Vincent's um, has a preferred vendor when it comes to now an organizational wide national electronic medical record system and EMR. And so we are going, we are going ahead with that project, uh, which is gonna be big, cause that's gonna be, um, you know, essentially 16 hospitals uh, in a big bang. Uh, over the next couple of years. So we will deal with that. Now, in the meantime, we're doing a big piece of work around data analytics and warehousing. So, you know, uh, I think the, without having all your data linked, uh, it's gonna be hard for um, intelligent analysis to happen. So we are trying to uh, warehouse our data properly with the right architecture and foundations. We are working with uh, different vendors to uh, use AI um, and different uh, algorithms to try to uh, make use of the data that we have to be able to predict uh, uh, demand and, and supply and, and manage our, our services. So that's all being played out this year. We've set up uh, quite recently an AI council at St. Vincent's, which I chair which is made up of different clinicians and representation from digital and technology and from the business and from clinical areas to be able to come up with a organizational wide um, AI strategy so that there is some governance around what's being introduced. As we know, it's, it's too easy for vendors to approach individual clinicians or teams and to and for different areas of the organization to start piloting AI models. We're trying to consolidate all of that, deal with, you know, yeah, leverage our size, have some synergies, reduce duplication, and ensure that we are basically targeted in our approach uh, so that there is an overarching strategy. So that's, that's in summary what we are, you know, the pretty big pieces of work, uh, big things happening at St. Vincent. The first challenge I think is data governance. We've <clears throat> just launched a, 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 a organizational wide data governance strategy and policy, but we are now uh, implementing that. So what, what I mean by data governance is the fact that there is data everywhere. Uh, there is health information, in different systems. Uh, there are, we have researchers doing research, they hold data and data has been kept in, in all sorts of different ways. And we are highly concerned about the privacy and security of all the health information that we have, uh, how it's being used, who has access. So it's about making sure that there is some governance around all of that to protect the data, uh, ensure that it is held in confidence for our patients and that it's not being misused. Uh, you know, there's a lot of, uh, discussions now around cyber security it's it's very you know so that's part of that but you know data governance I think is one key challenge for for us but also for everybody really the second key challenge is really um and i already mentioned this is to implement an organizational wide electronic medical record that's uh that can serve as a foundation and an operating system for everything else we want to do in the digital health space so we don't have that. A lot of our work is still paper-based. So I think creating the backbone uh, is, is clearly going to be very, very important. And, and then the third challenge, I think, and we are working on this, is having a, a clear digital health strategy for our organization that can bring us into the future. 
Now, we, we at St. Vincent's, uh, we've just appointed a chief digital uh, officer, a CDL, and she started yesterday. <laughs> And, and I think it'll be announced, I'm going to meet her this week. But she, uh, as a you know executive level member reporting to our group CEO, she will lead that digital health strategy. And so it's about, make. we already have digital health as part of our wider strategic plan. And our vision is for Simonson to be a leader in the digital health space, because we believe that that's going to be the future, really. It's moving health beyond the hospital walls uh, and and a lot of that is by using techn technology platforms, you know, telehealth, telemedicine, remote monitoring, um, the ability to use devices, uh, you know, wearables, and to be able to then move from just looking after acute and well people to the well-being and prevention space. So that you know we not only treat people who are unwell, but actually keep them well so that they don't get unwell. How do we use technology to help us with that? How do we, as an organization, in fact, monetize that? How do we actually, you know, because it's no, no one place in that space because people can't make money out of it, really. Uh, you know, you, you can make more money out of treating people who are unwell. And so that's that perverse incentive. How do we make a preventive health actually commercial so that, uh, it, which, which actually, if you do the cost benefit analysis, it is, actually much better for society to keep people well. It's cheaper, actually. It costs a lot more for society to have to treat people who are well, but, uh, but you know, providers don't make money in that way. So we are trying to move into that space. And I think technology, digital health is going to be key in, for, for us to do that. And the use of technology is going to be key. How do we gamify people to be healthy? How do we help them to track the, the things that they eat? How do they, you know, you know what I mean? Like, so because we don't do that at the moment, uh, people are just allowed to become sick and then we don't then worry about them. And, and then you got doctors and providers are making money out of sickness. And so we want to move that away really because the future really is in well-being and in health because the, the current way that health works is not sustainable. We just can't keep building hospitals. We don't have enough beds. Uh, ultimately hospitals will become ICUs. You know, you have to be really sick to be in a hospital. So how do we then look after people uh, with hospital in the home? How do we move to virtual care that's truly keeping people out in their own homes or in the community rather than having them in the hospital? So that's, that's the future and that's what we want to start doing.